Good afternoon, hello, my name is Daniel, this is the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel and today I've come down to UK Bike Fit for many things. The one thing I didn't want was a roasting about my bike, Dan, but it appears that I'm getting one today. This is my Canyon Aero CF SLX and I've raced it for a couple of years, crits, road races, winning the club chain gang, you know, all those important <laughs> milestone events. Now, there are a few things on here that I know that Dan doesn't approve of. Now, he's not rude enough to point them out to me on a normal day-to-day -day basis, but given that I've asked you to do this today, uh, you're allowed, Dan, so I'll please do feel free. instead. Exactly, yeah. So, Dan's gonna go through the parts of my bike and bike setup that he, as a bike fitter, and as just a cyclist in general, isn't a big fan of. Now, first thing I'm sure, Dan, you absolutely love the color. So let's leave it off to the side. <laughs> what do you reckon? Where shall we start? Shall we start with? Let me start up here. Okay, start at the front. That, that's the most obvious. Right. What's going up on the front then? Your, your shifted position leaves a lot to be desired. One needs to win it. We should also say I've not fitted this bike yeah. <laughs> at all. I sometimes jokingly tell people when I, know I point you do. out to it and shift as oh Dan fitted me. <laughs> told me to stop doing that. So yeah. Um, so, so what are you saying? What's wrong with that? Bar the angle of the shifters pointing in, because we'll come to that in a minute, but the shifters are, are, are really low, so they drop down off the bar quite, oh, quite they a do, lot. don't they, yeah. Um, so what that does to your body weight is it, it brings you forward over the front, wet, front end of the bike rather than right. having a bit more balance. Um, but then I've got a lot of body weight as well, so... But then you also have got your shifters pointed in at an angle. These are nowhere near as bad as I've seen you mm. run them in races, mm. so... Is that a conscious thing that you've maybe taken yes. some advice on board? Or? Um, I think I noticed that I wasn't actually riding that narrow when they were tilted in. I was still riding yeah. in the same position, so therefore I brought them out a little bit because it's more usable on the road like that. Yeah. So I, I have my shifters angled in slightly yeah. for a better hand position and then also to get into that aero position on the... Mm -hmm. uh, on what I need is narrow bars. They're 41 yeah. centimeters and they're too wide. Yeah. So don't do that to make up for an, a wide bar. You, narrow the bar first then do the shifter but um, that's probably as of next year not that we need to be UCI legal but that's going to be bordering on UCI illegal okay because they're banning the um, yeah. excessive shifter angle wheels and tyres Dan you happy with those they got the seal of approval yeah I think that well yes and no <laughs> the tyres themselves are good tyres for, for what you do crit racing and road racing but they're 23s aren't they yeah um, so debatable whether 23s are any faster than 25s, but just from a comfort point of view and a handling point of view, having a little bit wider tire, a little bit more squish in the tire as you go around tight corners gives you a bit more confidence and stability. So widen the tire would be a good move. Okay, I think I bought these because they're on offer and also my TT bike couldn't fit 25s on, so just bought the same tires. Yeah. Moving back and up, saddle, seat post, saddle rails, etc. What you got to say about that, Dan? This is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Shall we... Start from the top down. Let's start with the saddle itself. We'll start Let's not look at the gaff tape on this side from when I crashed it. No. And that, that would have been the point to change the saddle, but you just chose the gaffer tape yeah. option instead. So. Yeah, the, the, the saddle itself is probably not the best saddle for getting into race positions, let's mm. say. This uh, causes me some problems. Yeah, that's why. Um, yeah, it's individual. Like some people might use this saddle on a race bike and have zero problems with it whatsoever and find it really comfy. But on the whole, there are probably better saddles to enable you to get forward and get low and get more aggressive up here without causing saddle problems. And then we should probably talk about the rails. <laughs> the I need to change you... this for his race shoes. I'll get called out by a commissaire or something. I won't race with you unless you change that now. <laughs> I'm definitely not sitting on your wheel anymore. Um, you've put some round rails in a oval um, oval clamp, basically. Well, no, I adapted it with some gaffer tape on the on the rails. Yeah, the structural tapes doing some some. I've raced for two years on that, and it only moves a little bit. Yeah, compliance. Okay, I'll change that. Fine. <laughs> That's not ideal. <laughs> Moving on to the group set, then, Dan. Firstly, we know that Shram Red looks amazing. Yes. What about the actual practicalities of it? Yeah, um, the crank length is the thing that stands out i mean obviously you're a, you're a tall tall lad as well but mm. again for the, the more aggressive you want your upper body position in general the more positives there are to having a shorter crank so uh, these are 175s um, if you try and get your upper body quite low and aggressive you're going to really close down your hips more and then that affects your power output Whereas if you go to a shorter crank and keep your hip nice and open, you can get into that low, aggressive, race aerodynamic position while still producing, in theory, more power. Shorter cranks is something we're looking into on a lot of my bikes, isn't it? So I look forward to seeing yep. how that 
how yeah. that develops. Up to the cockpit then, Dan. I thought we'd done up here after you roasted my shifters, but um, it looks nice, doesn't it, this integrated cockpit? They are aesthetically pleasing. They do look nice. With my cyclist hat on, they look great. With my bike fitting hat and thinking about the practicalities of a one-piece cockpit, um, they are they are not great at all. Uh, personally, I just I, I don't I don't get them. Um, do you not run an integrated cockpit on your bikes? No. No. Okay. Everything's two-piece. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are ways there are ways to internally route the cables that are, uh, are still clean, but maybe better for, from a mechanic's point of view. Um, and practicalities of changing the fit and changing various things and servicing the headset. Um, but uh, the, the benefits of, of hiding the cables away just don't outweigh the negatives of having everything in, in, encased in this housing, whether you have to sort of take everything off to do one small job potentially and then put everything back on again. To, to change a stem on some bikes, that could be like a three hour job for a mechanic. Um, whereas with a two piece cockpit, it's a three minute job. So yeah, I'm not, not the biggest fan of, uh, of one piece cockpits for many reasons. And adjustability nice. wise, there's no adjustment on that. I can't change anything, can I? Unless I change the No, place. and that's the other thing. That, that's the, the stumbling block we come up, a lot, come up against a lot in fits as well, is that maybe the bar width isn't ideal, but everything else about the front end is perfect. Well, now you've got to buy a X amount of hundreds of pounds worth of cockpit just to change your bar width. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes almost not worth doing because from a practical point of view, spending that amount of money just to take two centimeters off your bar width, it's like, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a lot. Whereas normally, again, you'd just be able to do that very cheaply and very quickly, but. That's why I just took your shifters in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other thing you've done is cut your steering. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I didn't. No, well, uh, yeah. No. Can you DHB did that? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I bought a bike with a chop steerer tube. Yeah. And yeah, buying, buying second hand bikes with chop steerers means you've got to be very specific with your frame geometry and make sure that you will never need that extra height. Because if you need it and you haven't got it, then it's either buying a new fork um, or just suffering a bad fit. So, yeah, I probably don't approve of that, of that either. <laughs> Okay. Thanks very much, Dan. Really appreciate it. No problem. That. Pleasure. <laughs>